3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So you want to solve this one. So you want to solve 2x squared minus 3x minus 2 is equal to 0. So what do we do? We want to use the method of completing the squares. So the first thing we have to do is to make coefficient of x squared 1 before we check whether the expression is a perfect square or not. So let's divide through by 2. So we have x squared minus 3 over 2x minus negative 2 divided by 2 give us 1 is equal to 0. So we have made the coefficient of x squared 1. Now that the coefficient of x squared is 1, we have to check whether this expression is a perfect square. So we find half the coefficient of x, square the value, and find out if it is equal to the constant term, negative 1. So half of negative 3 over 2 will give us negative 3 over 4. And negative 3 over 4, when you square it, it will give us negative, uh, it will give us 9 over 16, good, 9 over 16. So 9 over 16, and the constant term is negative 1. So it's not equal to negative 1, and therefore it's not a perfect square. So we need to make it a perfect square by bringing in our own c, that is our own constant, which will be half the coefficient of b squared. And so, x squared minus 3 over 2x, negative 1, you can't make me a perfect square move. Let me bring what will make me a perfect square. So let's go. What will make me a perfect square should be half of the coefficient of x squared. So half of this one will give us negative 3 over 4. So plus negative 3 over 4 squared. That is that value squared will make it a perfect square. We don't want to change the given equation. We want to maintain it. So the same value must be subtracted so that the effect will be 0. So negative 3 over 4 squared. So that this will be 0 and the same equation is still there. Now that our new C is half the coefficient of x squared, it means the, this quadratic expression is a perfect square. So let's write it as a perfect square as we have learned. We said the perfect square should be x minus plus half of the b, half of the b, and half of the b will give us negative 3 over 4, all squared, x plus half of the b, all squared, then we simplify other terms, which will give us 9 over 16 minus 1 is equal to 0, so let's simplify the constant terms, so that we have x minus 3 over 4 all squared. It will be simplified. So negative 1 can be written as negative 16 over negative 16. So that when you simplify, you get negative 25 over 16. So minus 25 over 16 is equal to 0. So let's do grouping. x minus 3 over 4 all squared is equal to 25 over 16. Then we take square root of both sides. So x minus 3 over 4 is equal to plus or minus square root of this, which will give us 5 over 4. And therefore, we separate the x that is making the subject. So x is equal to 3 over 4 plus or minus 5 over 4. And if you want to separate the roots, then we have x is equal to 3 over 4 plus 5 over 4 or x equals to 3 over 4 minus 5 over 4 and this will give us this will give us negative 2 over 4 which is negative half and this one will give us 8 over 4 which is equal to 2 and so that is that you like it Okay, so that is the method of completing the squares. So in all, what have we learned so far? We've learned that we can use the quad, uh, factorization method to solve quadratic equations, but it cannot be used to solve every quadratic equation. So there is the need for us to learn another method. And the new method we have learned, which we call the method of completing the squares. 
what it does is that it expresses the quadratic expression a x squared plus b x plus c as a perfect square. So we just express it as a perfect square. How do you express it as a perfect square? Or how do you even identify whether the given expression a x squared plus b x plus c is a perfect square? The first thing you have to do is to make the coefficient of x squared 1 by dividing the equation through by the coefficient of x squared you get the coefficient of x squared 1. Then you find out if when you find half the coefficient of x, that is the b, and you square it, the result is equal to the constant term. If it is so, then that expression is a perfect square. And if it is a perfect square, how do we write it as a perfect square? The perfect square should be the variable, which is x, minus half the coefficient of b plus half the coefficient of b, sorry, plus half the coefficient of b, all squared, then you equate it to zero. Once you get it as such, you just take square root of both sides, and then you, you, you solve the equation for the roots. Now, if half of the b, all half of the b squared is not equal to the c, then it means that given expression is not a perfect square. So you will have to make it a perfect square. And what do you do? You shift the constant term, then you bring in a new constant that is going to make it a perfect square. And that new constant should be half the coefficient of the x term squared. Half the coefficient of the x term squared. So when, once you bring that one, it will make the quadratic expression a perfect square. But you have to remember, you cannot change the question given to you. So once you add that, you must also subtract the same thing in order to maintain the given equation. So that is all about the method of completing the square. It is the best method because you can solve it to, you can use it to solve any quadratic equation provided the roots exist. Provided the roots exist. You can use it to solve any quadratic equation. So until I see you next week, I have some three questions here. I'm going to put them on the board so that you work it out. So I'm writing the question on the board now. So solve these three questions by using the method we've just learned, which is the method of completing the squares. So go and solve these three questions by using the method we have just learnt. And I know you will be able to solve it. So until we meet again next week, bye-bye.